Hi, so in the previous video, we established the growth rates of a number of variables on a balanced growth path in the SOLO model. And in this video, we're looking at convergence to this balanced growth path. So we're thinking, do we tend to move towards this balanced growth path as an equilibrium? Or is this just some sort of notion of a of the growth rates of a number of variables, but we don't actually tend to move to this balanced growth path unless we have to um, change some policies. So for example, when we looked at the golden rule steady state of the SOLO model, we didn't converge to the steady state. We had to change our savings rate to get there. Now we're going to ask if, if we have to do this with a balanced growth path or if the economy just naturally moves towards a balanced growth path on its own. So to begin with, we're going to note down this finding from the previous video that we on a balanced growth path we have the growth rate of k over a l is equal to zero and we're going to actually define this k over a l to be this k tilde this tilde being the squiggly line above the lowercase k and we're doing this just because we're going to use this term quite a lot so we're going to have a bit of notation for it so it's a bit easier to to use in our equations and we're going to say that all other variables, we can just add this tilde to any variable, and this will mean that it's just the uppercase version of this variable divided by AL, or effective units of labor. So, for example, uh, Y tilde is going to be Y over AL, and so we, we know that our production function is K alpha multiplied by AL to the 1 minus alpha. So we can just divide this by AL and find that our Y tilde is equal to K tilde to the alpha, which we can just define as equal to this function of K tilde. And so it's worth noting that all of our variables actually depend on this K tilde in steady state, so or in balanced growth path, I should say. So all we really need to examine is looking at how k tilde grows. We noted that in a balanced growth path, the growth rate of k tilde is equal to zero. So we just need to figure out how, how this k tilde growth rate actually changes over time and will it naturally end up being at zero. And if it does, then that means we convert to the balanced growth path. So we let's think about k tilde dot or k dot tilde, which is just how k tilde grows over time. It's the derivative with respect to time. And so this is equal to this equation we see here. Note that this dot is over this whole expression. We've taken the derivative of the whole expression with respect to time, not just k dot, which is over al. The, this why I've made this distinction will be clear in a minute. And so what we can do with this is use the quotient rule to take the derivative of k over a l and i've written down the quotient rule here just in case you don't remember it from maybe from a long time ago studying mathematics and the quotient rule basically says if we have the denominator or the numerator of a fraction and we call that u and the denominator v then taking the derivative of this fraction is going to be equal to this expression here. We say the derivative of u multiply it by v minus the derivative of v multiply by u and then that's all over v squared. And this is what I've done here. We have that k is equal to u here and al is equal to v. And so the quotient rule tells us that this is the derivative of k tilde. And what we can then do is divide through by every term on the top by this AL all squared on the bottom. And we start to simplify and we can start to think about simplifying this equation. So for example, this AL here cancels out and we get K dot over AL. And then we can expand out this brackets and divide each of those by AL. And we get terms like this. We've done a bit of rearranging. It should be it should be clear what, what exactly I've done here. We've sort of split off the A uh, in this term and split off the L in this term so that we can get the growth rate of L here and the growth rate of A. If we remember our rules of growth rates, we know that A dot over A is just the growth rate of A and the same with L. So 
we can then notice that we've got k over ls here which is equal to k tilde and we've got the the gross rate of l here which is n and the gross rate of a here which is n so we've got this equation for the derivative of k tilde with respect to time which is k dot over al minus k tilde multiplied by g plus n now what we need to know and i emphasized it before is that this is k dot over al which is very different from k over al dot because this is the time derivative or the derivative with respect to time of this whole fraction whereas what we have in this equation here is the derivative of k over al and this doesn't really mean too much to us this is how the derivative of k or how k evolves over time and then just divided by al so we're going to want to get rid of this k dot over al term and the way we can do that is by using the capital accumulation equation in the solar growth model this is just sort of our fundamental equation of capital accumulation with investment minus depreciation being equal to the growth rate of capital and because we want to sub in for k dot over al we can just divide this by al and so we know that uh, our al term in this in this uh, solo capital capital accumulation equation will be become to the power of minus alpha and so we can write this as s k over l to the alpha and then our depreciation term becomes k over al and we know that k over al is just k tilde and again we have k over al here so that's k tilde and now we have a term for k dot over al in terms of k tilde and that's what we want so we can now substitute this k dot over al into the equation we've derived here and we can get rid of this uh, nasty k dot over al term which didn't really mean anything and now we can get an actual differential equation for how k tilde revolves over time in terms of k tilde so that's what i've done here we just substitute it in and now we have k dot tilde is equal to uh, these so just a number of expressions but it's in terms of k tilde and we can factorize and we notice that these share a common factor of k tilde and so we now have this sort of break even term here which is which we have depreciation the growth of technology and the growth of the population and then this is can be viewed as our sort of our save it's like our savings term because we knew that this was we had the y was equal to k tilde alpha and now we're just multiplying it by savings but these are all in terms of k tilde so they're not per capita variables they are per effective units of labor variables and um, but as i said what we want what we wanted from the beginning was to know about how uh, k tilde evolves and if it if we can f show that it naturally tends to zero the growth rate of k tilde goes to zero then this means that we converge to the balanced growth path so we want to look at the growth rate of k tilde and we know that using our rules of growth rates we can find a growth rate by looking at the derivative of that variable with respect to time divided by the variable so we just divide this equation here by k tilde and so we get that this power goes to the minus alpha and this k tilde cancels out and then we get this equation here so the growth rate of k tilde is equal to the savings rate multiplied by k tilde to the power of alpha minus one minus some constants which give our sort of break even term and we can rearrange this further by noting that alpha is less than one well, it's between zero and one so we can we can write this with k tilde on the bottom of this fraction to the power of one minus alpha it makes a bit more sense having it that way and we're still minus this sort of depreciation term which is just a constant and so now now we have what the growth rate of k tilde is with respect to k tilde which is nice and we can actually properly examine this so from this equation how do we tell 
if our if we converge to the balanced growth path well let's consider that our k tilde or our k over al it tends to zero and we know that k over al has got to be positive because we can't have negative values of capital or labor and we're going to assume that we can't have negative values of technology so this has got to be positive so what happens when we're at the lowest possible value of k tilde well if this k tilde term tends to zero well we're going to get s over zero minus just some finite constant uh, which is this term here and so this is going to tend to infinity the growth rate of k tilde will tend to infinity according to our equation here so if we have zero k tilde then we're going it's going to grow at an infinite rate if on the other hand we consider what's the highest possible value of k tilde we can have which is just an infinite amount of k tilde then again let's substitute an infinite value of k tilde into this equation and then we're going to have s over infinity minus this constant term and s over infinity is obviously just zero or it tends to zero and so the growth rate of k tilde is just going to tend to this negative constant here and one other thing that we can do is we can take the derivative of the growth rate of uh, k tilde and if we take the derivative we're going to notice that our constant uh, delta plus g plus n is just going to cancel out because it's just a constant and our s over k tilde is the power 1 minus alpha is going to if we take the derivative it's going to look something like this minus 1 minus alpha multiplied by s over k tilde to the 2 minus alpha and the specifics don't really matter too much but what we do notice is, is that this is negative obviously s is positive k tilde has to be positive and 1 minus alpha is positive because as we said alpha is between 0 and 1 it's just the relative and capital share of income so this is negative the growth rate of k tilde is strictly negative in k tilde so why have, why have I done this exercise of seeing what happens to the growth rate as k tilde tends to zero, infinity, and looking at the slope of k tilde? Well, we can do a, a graph of the growth rate of k tilde with respect and with k tilde on the x-axis. And so we did this uh, derivative to show that the, the slope of this curve is always negative. We always have a downward sloping curve Oops. and we what we said was as we tend to if as we have k tilde tending to zero we have this growth rate is shooting off to infinity this shouldn't really touch the y-axis but it should just go off way up into infinity so it's positive and as k tilde tends to infinity as we move more and more in the infinity direction we said that we're we're tending towards this negative constant, this um, delta plus g plus n term. So we have a negative slope. We start positive and we end negatively. And what we notice is that this y-axis is actually the growth rate. So if we have if we say begin at some k tilde one. Well, our growth rate is positive here of k tilde, so we're going to grow. We're going to increase our k tilde, and we keep growing until we get to the gk is equal to 0, because we're at the x-axis. What happens, and then at this point, our growth rate is 0, so the gk just stops, stops growing at this point. We have, and we just stay where our growth rate is 0. And the same as if we start at this, say, k tilde 2. If we start here, we'll notice that our growth rate is actually negative. It's below the x-axis. So the actual stock of k tilde is going to decrease and decrease. And we continue to be under the x-axis with negative growth until we get to this k tilde star, where, again, 
uh, the growth rate of k tilde is zero. So this shows that we have a globally stable and um, globally stable k tilde star that we always converge to, and this k tilde star has a growth rate of zero. And what we know from k tilde of the growth rate of k tilde being zero is that this is the balanced growth path. And as we said that our output was equal to k tilde to the alpha. So and we showed in the previous video that gk is equal to gy is equal to gc. So all of these um, quantities, all these capital output and consumption are going to also be growing at a constant rate. So what we have shown here is that we do actually converge to the balanced growth path. So that is all this working has just shown that we converge to the balanced growth path. Wherever we start in the model, we're going to tend, either we're going to reduce our k tilde or we're going to increase it so that we converge to BGP. So in the previous video, we showed that one existed, and now we showed that we necessarily converge to this equilibrium in the solo growth model. So that will just about wrap up this video. Make sure to drop a like if it was at all useful. Check out the playlist for future videos on this topic and subscribe for lots more economics videos.